So hello everybody, my name is Henry Brown. Um, as it says, um, I am a junior here at Virginia Tech in civil engineering, and I'm here to tell you guys all about the Virginia Tech College of Engineering experience. Um, and a little bit more about me, I am from Richmond, Virginia, and I am currently living off campus. Um, you know, it is a virtual semester, but I think everyone's making the most of it here in Blacksburg. Welcome to the College of Engineering Information session presented by the Dean's team. So what does it take to be an engineer? So first of all, it takes creativity. Uh, it takes the ability to look at a situation and come up with new solutions that maybe other engineers or other people wouldn't find in it. Maybe to find the same solution, but find it in new ways, min maxing costs and uh, labor and other factors like that. It also requires teamwork. So not only in your classes are going to have a lot of group work. So currently, I'm taking five classes, and I just realized the other day I'm actually involved in six different groups. Um, don't ask me about the math behind that, but yeah, I'm in six different uh, groups for my five classes right now. There's a lot of teamwork involved in engineering. You'll be working in groups professionally and in your academic work, so it's very important to have those uh, team skills. Next is study habits. Um, so it's really important to have these strong study habits carrying over from high school. I know I didn't have the strongest study habits, but by freshman year here at Tech, I really uh, realized that I had to build up these skills and make the most um, because some of these classes are a lot more difficult than what I was taking in high school, what you guys were probably done taking still in high school. Next is an interest in math and science. So I think I definitely had a strong interest in science and a relatively strong interest in math. Um, it depends on your exact major. Some like computer science are more, more, are more math driven whereas others like biological systems engineering, and we'll get to all the majors later, but that's more science driven. So it really depends on your exact major. And like I said, I'm not the biggest math guy. So now that I'm taking civil engineering, I really don't have to do super high level stuff. But again, it depends on your, uh, your major, uh, the major that you choose. Next is a challenging high school background. So I'm not admissions. I can't tell you what's definitively better or worse for your application to Virginia Tech. But in general, admissions looks favorably upon students who take as many challenging classes as they can. Now, if that means that your high school doesn't offer very many AP classes, that's okay. As long as you're showing that you're taking as many rigorous classes as you can, um, even if that is that does just mean the two or three AP courses that your school offers, you're um, putting your best foot forward and trying to take the most rigorous academic load. Uh, that's what admissions is really wanting to see. That also includes um, other classes like dual enrollment um, and IB. So next, um, here's a little profile of the freshman engineering class of, I think this is 2019 numbers. So the average reported GPA on a 5.0 scale was 4.07. Uh, the average SATs scores you can see there for math and reading. We had a 23.2% female class. And then we had 26.4% underrepresented minorities. So Virginia Tech, I think, is a school that has a diverse student base, and every year it's getting more and more diverse. So these numbers are higher than it was the year before. And I think another thing to point out is there's no minimum SAT scores in any categories. Of course, it helps to have higher SAT scores, but there's no specific minimum uh, to have your application considered. Same thing with GPAs. Now, general engineering. So Virginia Tech does its engineering a little bit differently than a lot of other engineering schools and that we have a general engineering curriculum for freshmen. Now, what does that mean? That means that we have a common entry point uh, for all freshman students in common class their freshman year. So instead of going into your specific major, whether that's mechanical engineering or aerospace, everyone, no matter what major they're going to later, starts as a general engineer in their freshman year. So that includes uh, some fundamental classes that we'll be getting into, like foundations of engineering, um, it includes your basic science classes like chemistry, basic math classes like calculus one and two. And then you are able to spend this freshman year really exploring Virginia Tech's different options to get a kind of a teaser of what all the different majors can be and to explore your options before you finally make that decision. And then at the end of your freshman year, um, in the spring, after taking your, your pathways classes, after making sure that your AP uh, transfer credits all have all applied and everything like that. And we do take AP, IB, CLEP, and dual enrollment credits. Um, but be sure to reference it um, because there's every year it changes. So just Google like Virginia Tech AP credits um, 
and you'll see what scores you need on what exams to get what credits. Uh, and then at the end of your freshman year in the spring, you will apply to uh, what major you want to have after your freshman year. And if you have a 3.0, it will get your first choice of major no matter what. It's guaranteed. So even if every single freshman applies to do mechanical engineering, uh, then and everyone has a 3.0, then they'll hire more professors, they'll book more classrooms, and they'll make sure that they have the resources to accommodate that larger load in the fall. Um, usually it's not like that. Uh, usually it's about the same as it was the year before, so there's there's not too much fluctuation year to year. But as long as you have that 3.0, you'll have your first choice. And if you don't have the 3.0, there's still plenty of offerings out there. So if you don't have the 3.0, it's not like you'll, you're will you not going to get kicked out of engineering or anything like that. You just might not necessarily get your first choice. Next, uh, so I said foundations of engineering. That is a freshman year class. So this is all about things like data collection and analysis, learning professional practices, like different professional licensure as an engineer. Uh, you learn about all the different engineering fields and majors. So maybe you're not sure what you want to do coming into college. Uh, you know you want to do engineering, but you're not sure what kind. Uh, foundations will help you learn about all the different majors and which ones you might want to pursue. You also uh, get to learn about problem solving. You get to um, model and design tools. Um, and you also the main highlight of the Foundations of Engineering course is a semester-long project where you either build a aesthetically pleasing vertical wind turbine, that's what my group did, or you build a drone like you see in the upper left there, and they fly that out in the drone cage. Um, and so there's there's a lot of uh, opportunities in your freshman year in the Foundations of Engineering course to learn about all these different skills and to kind of get uh, a, a highlight of all the different options before you go ahead and dive into one specific major. So next here, again, are some numbers about the freshman engineering class of 2019. This is the breakdown by major. So you can see in the column on the right, there's the number of students in that major per year. So if you take that number and you divide that by three, you will find the average uh, size of your cohort or just the number of students in a given year. So for example, I'm in civil. There are 616 students total in civil um, during this period. Um, and then if you divide that number by three, it's about 200 students per year, which is about right for, for my class of 2022 in civil engineering. So as you can tell, uh, engineering education is massive. That's everyone who's a freshman in general engineering. And then you have some larger majors like mechanical, then you have some smaller ones like mining engineering or biomedical. And something I think is important to note is it's not necessarily better or worse to have a larger or smaller major. Having a larger major means you have a lot more opportunities there's probably a greater diversity of classes and there are, there's a greater uh, width or like there, there are more dynamic opportunities available. However, in a smaller department like mining, I actually have a few friends in mining and they say they really like it because they get to know all their professors very well and they're very close with a lot of their classmates. So instead of in mechanical engineering where you walk into a class, you might recognize some people. Um, in mining, you probably walk into class and you recognize almost everybody. So it's really pros and cons depending on the size of your major. Now we're going to look at some opportunities. And I think this is really important because as much as Virginia Tech's academic uh, numbers are really good, and we're going to look at those later, um, I think the thing that distinguishes Virginia Tech from a lot of other engineering schools is the opportunities outside of the classroom um, and the different support structures, the things that you can do uh, outside of just sitting down and you know, taking notes and lectures. So first of all, we have our engineering minors. There are definitely more than what we have listed here. So there's computer science uh, is a very common minor. Green engineering is popular with a lot of people because uh, it ties in a lot to people's uh, curriculum. You have stuff like naval engineering, which ties into um, the ocean engineering and aerospace engineering track. Biomedical engineering minor, minor is very popular. And I think it's important to note that you don't have to be an engineering to necessarily get these minors. And you can also, as an engineer, get a minor that is outside of engineering. So if you're a, a chemical engineer, you can get a chemistry minor, or you can get a minor in theater or arts or something like that, if that's what interests you, and if you think it would be relevant to your professional career. So it's not like you're you're locked within something super specific. Like I was considering for a long time getting a geography minor to go along with civil engineering, even though they're not 100% tightly related. Another thing that's a great opportunity is undergraduate research. So undergraduate research is 
the ability for undergraduate students to pursue research with uh, professors and to actually be a part of real hands-on processes. So this can mean working in a lab. This can mean uh, executing surveys for uh, different studies. Um, there's a whole lot of opportunities with undergraduate research. And the best thing about it is it's really hands-on. It's not like you're just doing a bunch of busy paperwork, but you get to fully understand the problems that are happening and help to be a part of the solution. You also sometimes get your name on the paper, too, at the end of the day, um, if you contribute a lot to the research. Now, another thing that's great is study abroad. Study abroad is more than just a couple of programs here. I could talk all day about all the different programs that are offered, not only by the College of Engineering, but also by all the different departments within the College of Engineering, and then Virginia Tech as a university at large. So there are so many study abroad opportunities. And obviously, the past year, maybe it has not been the best year for it, but I promise you that uh, Virginia Tech has some of the best uh, study abroad opportunities out there, and there's a huge diversity in them. So I was uh, a part of something my after my freshman year called the Rising Sophomore Abroad Program, or RSAP for short. And that is a two-week program, which occurs in a wide variety of countries, um, everywhere from Spain to China uh, and everywhere in between. And I was able to actually go on the China track. And we spent two weeks in China exploring different universities, different industries. We had a tour, steel mill, a steel mill, uh, con a computer science um, a company, a lot of different professional firms. We had to tour a bunch of different universities while we were there and really to experience the local culture. And we also were able to learn about the, the challenges and some of the benefits of working internationally with, uh, with engineering. So, and that was just one opportunity. So there are really more than I could ever talk about when it comes to study abroad at Virginia Tech. The next thing is professional societies. Um, there are a whole host of professional societies for every major. So I know in mechanical engineering, there's the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. In uh, civil, there is ASCE, American Society of Civil Engineers. Um, and you've got similar groups for all different majors. And what these are really helpful for are your professional development, learning about what the industry is like, and having the chance to talk to professionals who, after giving their presentation on a Tuesday evening, they're just going right back to work Wednesday morning, doing the thing that you're probably aspiring to do in just a couple of years down the road. So professional societies are a great way to get involved early. And the last thing on this slide, I really think there should be a couple of slides because there's a lot involved here. Uh, the last thing is the engineering organizations. And we'll get to the design teams a little bit more. Uh, so you can see one there on the left. But design teams, there are a whole host of them, but there are also a lot of other ones. There is engineering Greek life here. Um, I'm personally part of Theta Tau, which is a professional co-ed engineering fraternity. Um, that's been a great uh, thing to be involved in. Um, and there are also other things like SWE, the Society of Women Engineers, um, which is another great organization. And there are just so many opportunities outside of the classroom that aren't strictly academic. They're not even strictly design teams, just different groups that you're able to get involved with uh, and really find other opportunities that you might not have at other schools and you might not just have in the classroom. So next, internship and co-op experiences. So it's okay if you all don't know what internship or a co-op is. I didn't know what one was going into my freshman year. But an internship is traditionally over the summer. So it's about a 10 to 12 week program where you work at a company as if you're just an employee. And you're able to do the same work that the professionals are doing. Obviously, you don't have the same training. You don't have the same academic background. But they put you in the same building and everything, and you're able to do as much as you can to contribute to this work for the summer. And typically, they are paid. And then you also have co-op experiences, which are similar to internships. However, co-op experiences occur during the fall and spring semester. So what you do is you take the semester off, and you go work for that company for that entire fall or spring. You're still enrolled at Virginia Tech. You're just not taking any classes. And so that next semester, you then come back and um, go back to your classes. So what you can see here on this map, this is uh, a kind of just an overview of what some of the internship opportunities people have had at Virginia Tech within the Dean's team. The Dean's team is a group of about 40 uh, Virginia Tech engineering students, myself included. Uh, and you can just see that there's such a huge opportunity um, 
for internships among even just these 40 people. And you can see all these recognizable brands here. Kimley Horn there in the upper right. That's where I was working summer 2020. Um, and so I think we'll be talking about this more in the next slide. But Virginia Tech engineers love to come back to Virginia Tech and hire more Hokies. It's Hokies, hire Hokies is the saying. Um, so this is just a quick overview here. So up next is career fairs. So career fairs, um, there are many career fairs during the year, but the main one we're going to talk about is Engineering Expo. So that occurs every fall in about September, uh, where 300 or so companies descend onto Blacksburg and they rent out a whole bunch of rooms around campus and a whole bunch of uh, very large conference rooms and things like that. And we hold a career fair. And I think my favorite thing to note about this slide is you can see up there um, in the middle, you can see there is the person in the maroon polo, the person in the business clothes, and the one in the maroon polo is actually the recruiter. Um, you might think that, oh, it's a Virginia Tech student, but no, it's Hokies hire Hokies. So they're not afraid to come back and really express their Hokie pride because they know how great of an education um, everyone gets here and how great of an experience people have. And so they really want to have those Virginia Tech engineers working for their firm. Um, there are also other uh, career fairs throughout the year. So Engineering Expo is just a kind of jack of all trades fair, but you also have specific ones for stuff like construction. You have a the CSRC, which is for computer science, and you have a lot of other more niche career fairs depending on what your major is exactly. But I think my, one of my favorite things is going to career fairs because there's, there's so much uh, buzz, there's so much energy in the room. A lot of people talking and get to make a bunch of great connections. And those people who are coming back to Virginia Tech know that they want to hire uh, Virginia Tech engineers for internships, co-ops, and for full-time. Next up is Galileo and Hypatia. So they live in Hogue Hall. This is on campus. And Galileo and Hypatia, they are two of our living learning communities on campus. Now, what's a living learning community? A living learning community, or LLC for short, is a group of students that lives in the same building and they all have a common shared mission together. So whether that could be the arts, that could be leadership, or in this case, engineering. So in Hogue Hall, you have a lot of resources other than just everyone living together. You have these different kind of maker spaces, as you can see in the lower right and in the bottom of those pictures, where you're able to work on your projects, like I said earlier, the uh, like a wind turbine or your drone, you're able to work on those. You're also able to just do anything that you're interested in for like a passion project. So I know a lot of people like to make Christmas ornaments um, or holiday decorations for their family. Um, and those, those are really popular. And you just get to use any of the materials there, um, get to use other tools. They got laser cutters and a bunch of um, power tools, um, 3D printers. It's really anything uh, an aspiring engineer would want to have. and that's great, but I think the best part about Galileo and Hypatia, or Galopatia for short, is that you're able to live with a bunch of other engineers. And that what that means is if you're sitting on in your room studying for a chemistry exam, you're worried about practice problem number five, and you have no idea how to do it, and it's two in the morning, you've got that chemistry exam at 8 a.m., who are you going to talk to? Well, funnily enough, probably everyone else on your floor has that same 8 a.m. chemistry exam. And so you can just hop across the hall, knock on a door, and they're probably working on that same problem. And you can ask them about that, um, and you can figure um, you guys' situation out. And that's probably one of the best things, is everyone's just on the same page, everyone's taking the same classes, everyone can collaborate to really make the most of their, their freshman year and to help each other learn and to help um, bring everyone together as a team to make the most of their, their time. Um, I know a lot of people who are in Galapatia. I personally wasn't, but Galapatia is really popular. Um, my roommate actually was in Galapatia and he had a pretty good time. He's still really close friends to a lot of people he lived with, so I'd highly recommend it. But one thing, apply early. Galapatia fills up pretty quickly every year, so it's a first come, first serve basis. Send in the application. I sent in my application late before my freshman year, so that's why I wasn't there. I think it turned out okay, but um, I think it's it's really uh, a great opportunity. Not to mention there's more academic support, there's social events, professional development opportunities. And I think there's a 99 or 95% um, 
rate of people going into their second year of engineering in Galapagos as opposed to like the 90% across the whole freshman class. So that's just another great thing about it. Highly recommend it. Now, another resource, and th this is like what I was saying earlier, tons and tons of resources off campus um, or on campus, but outside of the classroom that really make Virginia Tech different. Um, peer mentoring and STEP are a couple of other ones. So first one, peer mentoring. I was actually uh, a peer mentee. So I had a mentor my freshman year, um, Paige. She was really great. Uh, it was, so you have, it's your mentor, who's usually sophomore, junior, or senior. And they have a group of about 10 or so mentees, maybe a half dozen. And you guys just get to know each other. And we had events where we would just meet up at like a restaurant just off campus. So there is free food involved. If uh, nothing else interests you, the free food is definitely worth it. But it's, it was really great being a part of the peer mentoring program because being able to just talk to someone who's even just had a year experience on, on what I've been able to do. And they just know a little bit more um, than me. I can ask them questions like what classes I should take. I can ask them about where I should eat, where I could eat on campus or their favorite study spots. And so having someone who's got a bit more experience than you, who can kind of show you the ropes about getting around ca campus and everything. Uh, it's really just a, a great thing. And I think it's, it's pretty underrated. Like peer mentoring though, really helped me, uh, gave me a leg up my freshman year. The other thing is STEP, which is a summer program that occurs immediately before your freshman year. So STEP, um, it's, I think it's four, it's five weeks um, where you take calculus, chemistry, and then your foundations of engineering course. And this occurs in the summer before your freshman year. And you live on campus, you eat at a dining hall. You're basically already starting your freshman year just about five weeks early. You might be saying, well, why would I want to start school early? I, I want to enjoy my summer break. But I think STEP is really great for people who are maybe not so certain about how the college experience will work for them or maybe living on their own for the first time. Maybe having that ex uh, increased course load could be a, too much of a challenge. And so they just want to see kind of a preview of what that'll be like. And the great thing about STEP is you get to take these courses, you get to take the exams. And for classes like Calc and Chem, um, you're then taking these courses again in the fall. Your grade gets wiped clean after taking it um, over the summer. And again, you might be saying, well, why am I taking these classes if the grades all get wiped clean? What's the point? But the big benefit of it is, like I said, you just kind of get to have a heads up. So the the running joke is that everyone for step, it's the night before the first chem exam, and everyone's just out on the drill field, you know, throwing a ball around or whatever, enjoying the sun, and then they go take that chem exam in the morning. The next day is not quite as happy because a lot of people realize the rigor that a college exam can have. And so by doing step, you get to learn that lesson. You get to understand how difficult things can be without it having a long-term effect on your grade. Now, the next thing is hands-on, minds-on. So we'll be talking about our design teams now. And really, again, like a lot of the other resources that we have on campus here that aren't strictly academic, they just go on and on and on. There are so many more design teams than they're listed here. There are probably three, four times as many as what are listed here. These are some of the most popular ones, but there are a lot of other ones out there. So uh, the kind of the motto is for a lot of these is you, you build it, you get to break it, and then you get to build it and you got to make it better again. And I think the most important thing to note about these design teams is it's not just a, a faculty member or two who really do all the, the real work and it's just the students who, who follow along. Not, it's not like that at all. The students are really the ones who design. They're the ones who build. They're the ones who test. They're the ones who get to follow through on a lot of these things. So, for example, AISC Steel Bridge, that is the more civil engineering oriented one. They build a massive scale steel bridge. It's about 20 feet long, about 10 feet wide. Uh, and it's made out of real steel uh, girders and everything. And they use real professional software to model it. And then they load test it and things like that. Uh, there's also Baja SAE, where they make a Baja-style off-road race car of sorts, uh, and they go out and race it. A friend of mine actually was one of the racers uh, for Baja. They go out to California, and they compete, and they do very well. There's also Sailbot, where they build an autonomous sailboat, 
human powered submarine. You can see there in the upper right, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a human in the submarine and they race it. Uh, you also have um, a lot of these other ones, Formula SAE, Formula One style race car. And I promise they're not all just racing based, but I think it's probably one of the easier competitions. Um, there's Bolt, the battery operated land transport, which is an electric powered motorcycle. We'll see a picture of that one later. Um, and it just goes on and on and on. Um, HEVT, I think, is another one you can see up there in the upper left. That is a, uh, not a Chevy Corvette. Can't remember the name of the sports, uh, the, the sports car, but Chevrolet donates a sports car to Virginia Tech and these students are able to convert it to a hybrid electric vehicle. It's a Camaro. Yeah, I finally remembered. Um, but they, um, Chevy donates that car and students are able to work on this real vehicle. And this isn't just like some, some vehicle that didn't make the, the testing specs. It's, it's, a, it's the real deal. Now, next up are some of the engineering rankings. Like I said, numbers aren't everything, but I think the numbers really work in our favor. So we are number 13 in the best undergraduate engineering program. So that's across all the majors. Some majors are a little higher, a little lower, but they kind of average around 13. And then number 31 uh, among the best graduate programs. Um, and I think that's, these are also some pretty, that's another pretty good number. We're also the number seven producer of engineers and the number eight producer of women engineers. And like I said, numbers aren't everything, but they work out in our favor. Next are some outcomes. So in 2019, the percentage of freshmen that continue to a second year of engineering is 90%. And I think that's a really important number to mention because I think there's this reputation that engineering is this weed out major and they don't want to see you succeed. They just want to crush you down your freshman year and that it's, it's all over and they, all the classes are just hard and they're weed out classes. But I really think that, that it couldn't be further, um, that couldn't be further from the truth. It's really um, a, a system where professors want to see you succeed. Your peer mentors want to see you succeed. Um, your academic advisors want to see you succeed and your classmates want to see you succeed too. It's not a cutthroat kind of environment. It's really collaborative and for me, um, it's what makes it so special. It's not just like I'll make it to the finish line and graduate as an individual, but we will all, you know, as a class and as a college, will make it um, to graduation in four years. But not to, but, and then also that ninety percent figure. That's just the five year average. Um, and I think it's also important to note that a lot of those students, maybe after a first year in engineering, realize that. Engineering might not necessarily be their calling, so they might switch out or something like that. And if you're looking for the 98 or 99% um, continuation rate into a second year, you can look at Gallopatia, like I mentioned earlier. And then after graduation, 74% of Hokies are employed, and then 13% plan to attend graduate school or have already accepted admission. And the ones who are employed have a median, median starting salary, the cool $70,000. You can look up all the salary information online if you want, um, if you're interested to. And now scholarships. Now for freshmen, there are not quite as many scholarship opportunities as there are for sophomores, juniors, and seniors. But this is because you're not really affiliated with a specific department. However, there are still opportunities out there. So the Davenport Leadership Scholarship, the Pratt Engineering Scholarship um, are both pretty, pretty good. Financial aid is also um, a reality for a lot of students. It's not like this thing that people just talk about and nobody gets. It's actually very common to be able to receive financial aid. Um, so make sure you fill out your FAFSA. If you are an incoming freshman in this fall, um, fill out your FAFSA. FAFSA, yeah. Um, and if you're currently like a high school junior right now, when it's your time, fill out your FAFSA by the priority deadline. Um, that way, if you fill it by the priority deadline, you'll have your maximum um, ability to receive financial aid. It's really, really important. I cannot overstress it, uh, filling out your FAFSA. There are also Virginia Tech, or sorry, Virginia Community College transfer student uh, scholarships, like the Leo A. Pattis scholarship. And then for upperclassmen, you have College, college of Engineering funds and departmental scholarships. And the great thing about this is once you start at Tech, going into your sophomore, junior, and senior year, you have an application, which I just finished mine recently, for your scholarships that it's just one application. And it maybe takes an hour, an hour and a half, including the, the essay that you have to, the short essay you have to write. So it's really very convenient to be able to have all your scholarship resources in one place. 
Um, and then, it, like I said, it's just one application. And it's important to mention, too, that in your sophomore, junior, and senior year, because you're affiliated with the department, you have better odds of receiving a scholarship. So my freshman year, I didn't have a scholarship. And I was just thinking, oh, that's it. No more scholarship for me. Oh, well. But going into my sophomore year, because I was a part of the civil engineering department, I received scholar, a uh, scholarship or two, actually, um, from the civil department. And that was because it was affiliated with like a specific group. I already had a GPA. They knew I was like fully invested in doing civil engineering. So if you don't get a scholarship your freshman year, don't be worried. That could change very quickly. And then another little detail here, computer requirements. Um, so it's important to know that there are specific computer requirements for tech. It's very tempting to get a Christmas gift laptop or something like that. But I'd recommend just holding off until March. So for people, um, for potential Hokies starting in the fall of 2021, these requirements, I believe, are already out. But just go and check up on them. Make sure that you have the minimum specs, that you're able to run all the different software and tools that you'll need as an engineer. You, It's okay to have a laptop or a two-in-one tablet. I just have a regular laptop, but I know a lot of people who have like a, the two-in-ones that like fold back on themselves and you can you, you know write on it. So it's really up to you, personal preference. I know a lot of people like their digital notes, but again, it's just up to you. And now we'll be able to go and take a look at all of our different majors. So first up is electrical engineering. Uh, electrical engineering is exactly what it sounds like. It's all about the electrical systems in the world. Uh, this includes working on different robots. This includes uh, power grid management, um, a lot of defense systems, power, uh, transportation. So you can see that picture up there in the upper left. It's the battery operated land uh, transport bolt, like I was saying earlier. So that's one of our design team products. You can see students working uh, again, hands on, minds on. Um, and some of the other pictures here. Uh, there is the the Hume team that works with a uh, wireless radio hardware here at Tech, and then we have our Virginia Tech wind turbine team, which actually finished second place at the collegiate wind competition here recently. So that's electrical engineering, very focused on the hardware. And this is the first um, part of what we like to call the digital spectrum, which ranges from the hardware side of things, the software side of things. So electrical is just, again, purely on the hardware standpoint, you might work a little bit with like computer circuits, but not quite as much. But if you are interested in working with computer circuitry, with uh, that hardware aspect, computer engineering is probably the major for you. So as a computer engineer, again, this is kind of right there in the middle. It's the hybrid of digital work and um, more hardware work. So um, as a computer engineer, you'll be able to work on different systems which kind of mesh those two concepts together. You'll be able to understand some about the physical, the hardware aspect. You'll take classes on building circuits and some of these electricity fundamentals. Then you'll also be able to take classes on software and how the software interacts with the hardware systems. Um, and then I think my favorite example of computer engineering is uh, something that some students put together, which was kind of like a spinoff on Life Alert. So everyone knows life alert, you know, I've fallen, I can't get up, press the button, call for help. But sometimes you might not be in a condition where someone uh, has fallen, they might not be able to press that button. So that's where the pressure sensitive fabrics come in. So uh, engineers developed pants that have a pressure sensing ability. And so when they detect a very rapid high pressure, like a fall, they're able to automatically call for help um, through uh, the different software that they installed. Um, and that's just one example of computer engineering where they mesh the hardware and the software aspects. Now, next up is computer science. This is the last one kind of on our digital spectrum, we like to call it. So this is going to be purely software. And this is going to be all about the code. So if you're interested in coding, in programming, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, um, computer science is the major for you. Uh, something I think it's great to know about is the hackathons. You can see in the lower left, those two guys are, have got VT Hacks shirts on. So we have multiple hackathons on campus every year. Um, they're, some of them are right on campus, or sometimes there are students that participate in hackathons that are a little bit more national or international, but those are really popular. Oh, whoops, did not mean to flip that slide there. 
Um, but computer science is really great because it's one of the larger majors here, actually. And it has a lot of connections into a whole bunch of different uh, majors. So that includes some media work. So like my roommate is actually a computer science major, but he's also taking some like animation classes. So he's learning about the, the digital side behind that because he's really interested in like cinema. You also have the human computer interactions. Um, you learned about some of the ethics behind um, computer science work. There's a lot of math in computer science. So you take a couple extra math classes. Um, that's kind of what computer science is all about. Next up is mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering really is the jack of all trades major. You pretty much can do anything with a mechanical engineering major. So, for example, I was at, I had an internship with a civil engineering company in the summer of 2019. And we actually had another intern who was a Virginia Tech mechanical engineer because he'd taken classes learning about fluid mechanics and water. And so he was able to apply those skills to the civil engineering world, which I thought was a great example of mechanical engineers really being able to find their place anywhere. And more classically, you've got uh, things like, you know, formula SAE again, in the lower right. You've got the HEVT, hybrid electric vehicle team in the lower left. There's the Camaro. It's a better bit of a bit of a better view. But you also have, I think that's Baja in the upper right. And then I'm not sure which team that is, but that's at a football game. They brought out this little robot dog and it did some some push-ups there on that board. It was, uh, it was, I was actually at that game, so I'm somewhere there in the background. But there's mechanical engineering. You can really do anything with it because you work with hardware systems. You work a bit with electrical stuff, a lot of automotive work. You learn a lot about the principles of energy and the different um, kinds of energy, um, a lot of these physical systems um, like statics, dynamics, and deforms. Those are a lot of the topics you learn about in mechanical engineering. It's really, you can do anything with a mechanical engineering degree. Next up is aerospace. So aerospace is a lot, is very in common, has a lot in common with ocean engineering, which is what we'll be talking about on the next slide. So aerospace engineering is exactly what it sounds like. Everything that flies through the air or travels into space has to be designed by an aerospace engineer. So they work with aerodynamics, propulsion systems, um, space engineering, even flight dynamics and controls. And uh, one cool thing that we have is a Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 jet engine that is located in Goodwin Hall. That's a picture in the upper left. It might look a little small in that picture. It's about 20 feet in diameter and just hanging up there um, in the air. Um, there's pretty thick cables, but it kind of looks like it's hung up by a string at this distance. Um, and it's really a cool site. So if you get to come and visit campus sometime soon, go check out Goodwin Hall. You can see that jet engine hanging out in the main room. Um, you can't miss it. There are also the drone cage on campus, like I said, there in the upper right, or drone park, I think is the official name. So it's like a closed controlled area. You don't have to worry about birds. You really don't have to worry about any intruders. It's a controlled space. Um, so you can freely fly drones around without uh, having the chance of losing them in a tree somewhere. Because I've had that happen before, and that, that's certainly a hassle. You also have the design build fly team which is in the lower right there, actually recently placed second in an international competition. Um, so that's DBF is a really popular team here. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of different opportunities. The next thing is ocean engineering. And like I said, it has a lot to do with aerospace because if you think about air and water, it's just a matter of viscosity. Um, it's the same kind of uh, properties at the end of the day. So you have some design teams like Sailbot, like I said, you have, you have human powered submarine, but you also have stuff in the lower left, like ocean engineering research. So there are labs in Goodwin Hall that you can actually see visible just from the main area. You can see students working on their lab through glass. Um, and it's really cool because they have these huge tanks of water and they have these different geometric shapes and like test vessels. And they get to see how they travel through water and the aerodynamic effects or hydrodynamic effects around them um, and all the different vehicle structures that they can come up with and different propulsion systems. So again, like a lot of the other majors here at Tech, it's very hands-on and you get to have a lot of real world type of lab experiences. Next up is industrial and systems engineering. This one is also up there with mechanical and that is kind of the jack of all trades. However, in the sense that mechanical engineering is all about the mechanics of things, about the physical parts of the jack of all trades, uh, industrial and systems is more about the conceptual. It's more about the design of things. 
That's kind of like the engineering of efficiency. So it can deal with human systems, management, manufacturing systems. So something an industrial systems engineer would be tasked with is taking a manufacturing line and finding the most efficient layout for it. So this could mean finding which tasks you have in what order, or maybe finding points of inefficiency within the design and working those points out. So industrial systems engineer, it's all about uh, optimization and the different systems that people can use, a lot of the human interactions with these kinds of systems. But just like mechanical, it's kind of hard to pin down just one specific thing that they can do because it's such a, a multifaceted dynamic major. Next is chemical engineering. So chemical engineering is different from just strictly chemistry because chemical engineering is a lot about taking these chemical properties, understanding them, but then applying them uh, to different contexts and finding uh, functional uses for them, not just understanding the different chemical properties and the backgrounds behind chemicals. Um, so one example of a, a team that we have for chemical engineering, which I think is probably one of my favorites, is the ChemiCar team. And I think that's right there in the upper left. ChemiCar, they build a small vehicle car that is powered strictly by chemical reactions. So the car starts at one location and has to stop exactly at another location. And the closer you get to that exact stopping point, the more points you score. And it's all about timing and measuring and ha having these exact proportions for chemical reactions. That way the vehicle stops exactly on that point. I actually know someone on the chemi car. They are an elite design team. Um, they do extremely well. They, I think they even hosted, um, they were set to host uh, their design competition here actually recently. Um, so that's chemical engineering. It's a great major. And then I think one important thing to mention too is that they have a study abroad opportunity. One of many in engineering, but in Germany or Denmark, um, usually the summer after their junior year, they get to have a lab opportunity to study abroad. A lot of students do it in Boxburg, but a lot of students also do it abroad. Um, that's a unique opportunity that chemical engineers have. Next up is material science and engineering. So material science and engineering is exactly what it sounds like. It's the materials, um, the science and engineering behind materials. So this is about taking different polymers, ceramics, composites, metals, and manipulating them into ways that they become stronger or more ductile or maybe more brittle or whatever properties that uh, specific use might have for them. So you can see there in the lower right that we have a forge or blacksmith, or I don't remember the exact term, but it's a VT foundry, actually. That's what it's called. Um, so it's a foundry on campus where you're able to manipulate metals. And they, you can work with molten metal. And this isn't just something that's reserved away for specific grad students. We just show this picture just to show off. No, undergraduate students. I'm not even in materials science and engineering, but if I wanted to, I could get involved there. I could come show up. I actually was able to hear a presentation by the professor, I think, that manages that or one of the students that works there. And it's open to anybody. And I think that's something very special, not about not only about materials, but about Virginia Tech in general, is you don't have to be deeply involved in something to be able to be a part of it. Um, it's very versatile. Now, you might be wondering what that picture is of a football player is doing up there. But that is Cedric Hume. He was, I believe, a running back for Virginia Tech football back in the 2000s. And he was a really key player. He had a broken forearm um, and he had to um, he wear a cast. But the problem is he can't wear a cast on a football field. So that would be considered uh, basically a weapon with how fast of a player is move and how heavy this cast is. So what they did is they went to the material science and engineering, engineering department and they said, okay, we need a lightweight cast that will protect him, but he'll also be able to play on the field with. And so they developed that cast, the black cast that's there on his forearm. And he went on um, to play the rest of the season afterwards. And they won quite a few more football games afterwards too, because of it. So they like to say that material science and engineering wins football games. Next up is civil engineering. So this is my major. I'm a little biased, but it's probably my favorite. So I really love civil engineering, not only because it's a versatile major, you can see all the eight different subdisciplines within it, but because you get to really see the impacts of civil engineering on a daily basis. The house 
that I'm sitting in right now. The street that it's uh, built on was designed by a transportation engineer. This house is constructed by a construction engineer. The, the ground it's built on was contoured and the, the topography was designed by a land development engineer. Um, the structure was probably worked on a little bit by a structural engineer. Um, the, the earthwork was worked on by a geotechnical engineer. Um, and so there's all these different multifaceted parts of these projects where just walk down any average city block and you're able to see the impacts of civil engineers. And you can see here, there's also a very wide diversity. So you have stuff like water resources where um, a student, uh, sorry, a professor, um, Mark Edwards, worked on the different water quality actually in Flint, Michigan. You can see it there in the lower left. So he did a lot um, to help the, the water crisis there. I think that's also in the lower right of the concrete canoe team where they work with materials. So like there's material science and engineering, but there's also materials in civil engineering. Um, and so they're working with concrete there to build a canoe that floats and they race it. Um, canoe made of concrete. It sounds like a joke, but I've seen it and it looks amazing. Um, they, their team was most recently named, so they called their canoe the Romans, which is kind of an eye roller, but I think it's funny. Um, so yeah, that's civil engineering. It's a uh, really multifaceted, um, and you get to see your results a lot in the real world, um, very easily, just in ordinary places. Next up is construction engineering and management, also known as CEM. So construction engineering and management is a very unique program because there was a need in the industry for specialized engineers who understood civil engineering practices, but also um, project management practices and economic factors. So it's very closely related to the construction track in civil, but you have a much bigger emphasis on business and management practices. And I think it's really interesting because again, it was industry kind of demanded. It wasn't just like professors at Virginia Tech wanted to create this. There are professionals that came to Tech and they said, these are the kinds of professionals we're looking for. These are the kinds of engineers that we want to have. So thus the CEM program was born. And it's actually one of our two programs, uh, one of a couple of programs we have where there is a 100% job placement immediately after graduation with most uh, students having multiple job offers. And fun fact, construction engineers and uh, CEM majors, they get to wear their hard hats at graduation. Um, so it's very easy to po uh, point them out from the crowd with their orange hard hats on. Next up is mining engineering, one of the other programs that we have that has 100% job placement. Mining engineering, it's not just about the explosions. That's part of it, for sure. But it also has to do with the evaluation of sites, exploring different site options, and then properly developing them, maintaining high safety standards. And then finally, after processing and extracting your minerals, having a responsible uh, environmental stewardship and restoring the site back to um, safe conditions um, that were similar to previous conditions as much as possible. So again, like I said, I know a few people in mining engineering. It's a really small, tight-knit major. That means you really get to know everybody very well. And like I said, too, it's 100% job placement, which I think is a nice perk. All right, next up is biological systems engineering, or BSE for short. So this combines biology, chemistry, and engineering to find problem, like to solve problems with environmental protection, renewable resources, um, and then a lot of the also works with a lot of like organic products like food, pharmaceuticals, polymers, and biofuels. So you can see some examples here. I think this is the soil judging competition there in the lower right. Um, and then you have a couple pictures, like you got a picture there in the lower left. I think that's engineers that borders working on biological systems and en engineering work. Um, and you also have a couple other pictures here. So biological systems is, again, it's kind of like in a similar vein as chemical engineering, where you take your scientific processes and your scientific principles from biology and you find um, real world applications and you um, they work to solve problems using these specific properties. Uh, you also have stuff like food engineering, environmental health engineering, watershed work, uh, and then a lot of people also go into the health profession after working with BSE. Next up is biomedical engineering, which has a lot to do with BSE. So you look at biomedical devices, biomedical uh, imaging, uh, biomaterials, um, and now this is actually a recent major uh, because they previously it was only a minor, 
but they realized that students really wanted to see these biomedical engineering uh, practices. So they made it into a full, fully fledged major, and they started out by only taking about 40 students, then 60 students the next year, then another 80. So they've been growing at year by year by year. Uh, and then, so I think by next year, it'll just be just another regular major. And it's it's been really great. I know a couple of people in biomedical. Um, fun fact, we actually have a student volunteer rescue squad on campus. So that's what you can see in the upper left. So it is the, I think it's, I think it's just called VT Rescue. Yeah. So if students are looking for real world medical practice to be able to be a part of that, it's really a student driven organization. Um, so that's one way that, that students can get highly involved with biomedical engineering work. And so that's all the majors. That it might have seemed like a lot. It is quite a few, but Virginia Tech has a very wide assortment of majors that students are able to choose from. And I think that's really a great asset. They're not, and they're not all just clustered in the same little family. There are majors like construction engineering and mining engineering that are incredible programs that you really can't find anywhere else. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more, you can just scan the QR code here or just Google Explore Engineering Virginia Tech. And you can learn a little bit more about all of these majors, some of the minors they're commonly paired with, some of the classes you might be taking, and some of the internship opportunities, and even more that I wasn't able to go into today. And finally, why did I come to the College of Engineering at Virginia Tech? What is my personal story? So for me, I was, I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Um, for those of you that I missed the introduction, that's okay. Um, I'm from Richmond. I've lived in Virginia my whole life, and I was pretty sure I wanted to do engineering. I didn't really want to do science. I didn't really want to do math. Maybe something that kind of combines it all together. And my mom was a civil engineer, so I figured, okay, let's, let's definitely do engineering. Um, so I was trying to decide what school to go to, and I knew Virginia Tech was a great option. And it's right here in state beautiful campus, some of the best food in the country. Um, and I wish we mentioned that in the presentation more, but it really is some of the best food in the country. Uh, beautiful campus, great academics and everything, lots of resources outside of just the classroom. But so it was kind of a no brainer. I had a massive list of almost 60 schools that I kind of filtered through and I did a handful of visits here and there. But I, I kind of had a hunch that the whole time it would be Virginia Tech at the end of the day. So I did end up coming here, um, but the thing that really made it special, the thing that has kept me here, the reason that I'm happy that I'm still here today, and I'm happy to say that I'll be here until I graduate next spring, um, is really the sense of family that Virginia Tech has. It's the community, and it's that we're not here just to get an education. We're not here just for the classroom, but that everyone who's a Hokie at Virginia Tech is here for the full experience. Um, student, like when I'm in the classroom, I see people that I know um, from other classes. I see my friends. I get to know people. Um, there's really that sense of community where everyone is getting through this together. It's not like it's cutthroat where I kind of had that experience in high school where people would think, oh, if I, you're doing better, that means I'm behind on the curve. But at Tech, it's really uh, a community-driven thing where everyone gets to go across the finish line together. And that's what I think is really special about tech engineering, that sense of family, that sense of community. And that's why I'm happy that I'm still here today. And finally, questions. First question, do most students get their internship through Virginia Tech or on their own using connections and cold calling? Well, I think that's a really good question, um, Karthik. It's a kind of a mixed bag. Freshman year, it's probably mostly through connections and cold calling because you might not have experience. And just as a freshman, it's kind of hard to get an internship, if I'm being honest. I was able to, but um, it's and it's definitely worth trying, but it's a little bit on the harder side. Uh, however, going into your sophomore, junior, and senior year, there are a lot more opportunities through Virginia Tech career fairs. So I think it probably leans more on going through Virginia Tech, because now you have that experience. So going into a conventional career fair is really a great, um, great option. Um, Next one and is how often are career fairs held for computer science majors? Um, this, uh, I think it's, I mentioned the CRCRC is in the fall. I think it's once, maybe twice a year that they have like a computer science specific uh, career fair. 
But usually a lot of, as far as I've heard from my computer science friends, they have those opportunities really close up as it gets towards the end of the fall. So that's something that's best to look into relatively early on. Um, so like late summer and early fall. But I think once or twice a year, uh, Expo also has computer science opportunities. I know Microsoft and Google, I think, are there. Um, so I think a, a couple times a year, I think that's a safe answer. What's the qualifying criteria for getting into G and H? Um, oh, Galileo and Hypatia. Okay. The qualifying criteria is just a basic application. I'm not really sure if there's any specific criteria. Um, I don't think it's a super strict application. It's more like a kind of, it's not a formality, but they have to show that, show that you want to be a part of it. I think you have to write an essay, a short essay or two. It's really not too demanding, but just, Basically, that you want to be a part of it, I think, would be the qualifying criteria. It's not like it's some super strict application that only the the chosen few get selected in. I think it's a pretty high acceptance rate. But because of that, make sure you complete it soon because of the the first come first serve basis. Now, does cybersecurity fall under computer science or computer engineering? Um, I'm like 99% certain that falls under computer science. Yeah, because it has a lot more to do with the um, like the software sides of things. There is so, um, computer, cybersecurity aspects with computer engineering, and you probably could do computer engineering major and a cybersecurity minor, but probably you'd make a little bit more sense to do computer science and cybersecurity together. Um, next question is from Connor. Is Does Virginia Tech's distance from major metro areas affect its internship and co-op opportunities? Also, do you have any info on the percentage of students who do internships and co-ops? Thanks. Great question, Connor. Um, I think being having distance from major metro areas does have an effect on internship and co-op opportunities. So you're not really going to get an internship or a co-op in Blacksburg or Roanoke, which is about 40 minutes away. Those aren't going to happen very often. They do happen. But the big but to all of this is that Northern Virginia, this massive you know, suburban sprawl forever with Washington, D.C. and the DMV area, so many opportunities up there. Um, a lot of Virginia Tech students are from the DMV area, especially Nova, Northern Virginia. Um, so you're going to find a lot of opportunities up there. I'm from Richmond, so I, I've gotten a couple of few internships there. I think that it, it does have an impact. But I don't think it's very big because Virginia Tech is one of the best engineering schools for a while around. And um, recruiters are not afraid to drive three or four hours from northern Virginia because they want to come back to visit campus anyways. So I think there maybe is an impact, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's not very large. And then I don't have a, a specific percentage of students who do co-ops and internships, but I like to say it's a pretty normal thing. It's not like co-ops or internships are some elusive thing that people only get to experience once during their college career. I've had, I'm going into my third summer with my internship. Most of my friends have it, are going to have at least two summers of internship experience by the time they graduate. Um, it, it, it depends person by person, major by major, but it's a pretty common thing. It's not like it's super hard or difficult to get to a, a internship or co-op, especially by your junior and your senior year. Um, next question from Christine is how often are there interdisciplinary activities between engineering majors and other majors like business? I would say it's not the most common thing, but if you want to be involved in that, it's totally um, an opportunity that you can seek out. So I remember my freshman year, there was this opportunity where it was like a collaborative competition between with business majors and engineers and I think a couple of other programs working together in small teams. Um, to design a product and market it and everything. Um, it's like the business pitch competition. It's, it's been a couple of years. But there are opportunities out there if you want to look for them. I'll say it's not super mainstream. So you're not going to have, there, like most design teams are pretty engineering focused or there's like business clubs. They're pretty business focused. So there are interdisciplinary options, but you kind of have to look for them a little bit. They're out there, but you they're not the most common thing. I hope that helps. Um, Aiden asked, um, you said you were not able to live in Galileo your first year. Did I live in a traditional hall? What was my experience like? And which experience would you recommend for a freshman? I lived, yeah, I lived in a, just a traditional hall. So I lived in Slusher Hall, which was didn't even have an LLC in it. Um, and I would say my experience is great. 
I don't think there's a wrong answer for living on campus. There are just different options, different places. So some halls are a little bit more on the quiet side. Some halls are a little bit more on the social side. Um, and then some of them are kind of in the middle. Some are newer, some are older, some have AC, some don't, some are sweet style, some are traditional style. There's really no wrong answer. Your, your freshman year experience is what you make of it. I just recommend get out of your room, talk to your hallmates. Um, if someone is just sitting, people are just sitting around, just chatting in the hallway, go and join them. Um, I'm not still really, I'm not super close friends with people that I met my freshman year, but my freshman year experience is molded by the people that I spent time with. And I really don't think you can go wrong with where you live. Um, but I think Galileo does help though. Uh, if you're interested in Galileo, definitely sign up as soon as possible. Uh, there's no wrong answer though to where to live freshman year. And then last question from Christine. Have there been any students working closely with vaccine developments? I'm not sure about vaccine development specifically, because I'm pretty sure it's mostly been private work with different companies like uh, Moderna um, and Pfizer. But there have there were a lot of students, especially back in the spring, who were working on kind of stopgap measures. So there were um, a lot of like ma mask research. There were students creating masks and finding different mask options or homemade stuff. So there were a lot of students that were involved with that. There was also a, very prominently a professor in the news in the civil department who was looking at like the aerosol behaviors and how uh, COVID-19 can linger in the air in an environment even after for minutes or even hours after someone has left. So that was recently in the news. I'm pretty sure she was interviewed by like the New York Times. Um, so not necessarily research with vaccines, but with COVID-19 research, there have been um, in general. There has been student involvement. And then another question from Adam. Great question. How big is Greek life for the engineering students? I think Greek life is with engineering. So there's engineering specific Greek life. So there's um, I'm involved in Theta Tau, which is professional co-ed. There is Sigma Phi Delta, which is social engineering. Um, that's all male. There's Alpha Omega Epsilon, which is professional and social sorority. And then I think there might be one or two um, other options. And then you also have engineering students who are in just more traditional social Greek life. Um, so I think Greek life, it's less popular than the rest of the university because Greek life is a, can be a pretty big time commitment. And you know, engineering, it's it's not impossible to make it manage, to make it work. I'm in Greek life pretty pretty involved. But I think it's less common for engineering students because of the time commitment of classes. Plus, Greek life can be a lot for some people. But um, it, I'd say in terms of just how big it is, it's noticeable, but it's not as common as other programs like um, just other majors and other departments. Thank you for coming, everybody. I'm really glad everyone was able um, to be here today. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Glad everyone could come out today.